Hello and welcome. I hope everybody is having a great day, whether it is your morning, um, like me, I'm, it's my Monday morning, or if you're watching this on the replay. If you're watching this on the replay, let me know. Give me a hashtag replay. I love the um, interactions with you guys, so make sure you leave comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Uh, I do love to hear from you guys, so just be an par active participant. I really do appreciate that. I'm going to wait for more people to jump on before I make my announcement. But um, in the meantime, for those of you who are new, and sorry, I'm looking down, but I am just checking my phone. I have a hard time getting comments sometimes, um, being able to see your guys' comment. So I like to keep it up on my phone too, so I can see your guys' comments while we do this. So also, Allow StreamYard to show your name uh, so that I can see your comments when you make them. It's really helpful for me to be able to interact with you guys. This is streaming live on several different pages of mine. So that's why I'm using StreamYard. And it'll be, I'll be able to see who it is that's commenting. And so I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. For those of you who don't know me and are new to my uh, page or my YouTube channel, my name is Evelyn Knight. I am the Child Care Business Coach, the host of the Child Care Business Coach podcast. I'm also the owner and founder of Child Care Business Professionals, which is a company that helps owners and directors bring their child care centers to a successful level. I help you learn how to manage your employees, learn how to um, really just streamline your business. Uh, we often don't understand that child care centers are a business. They need to be treated like a business. And so I help owners and directors learn how to bridge that gap between doing what's wonderful for the children and being there and having healthy business practices. You can't have a healthy center without healthy business practices. So it just it's like a marriage that needs to come together in order to be successful. So that's what I do. I'm also a child care center owner. There's a lot of consultants out there right now. Wasn't so many when I started, but now there's a lot of consultants and uh, coaches out there. But what makes me different is that I own a child care center. I am in the trenches with you guys. I've owned several, I've started several centers, so I'm in the trenches with you guys. So welcome everybody, say hello as you hop on. I love to see who's here. And right now I can't see any of you, but um, I do have a big announcement for you guys. So I'm really excited about my announcement. So I think I wanna just get straight to that, um, my announcement, cause I'm so excited about it. So we are going to be hosting a conference, a live conference in person, because I think we're all really, we miss seeing each other, being together, and just being able to network and do things together live. So my conference is going to be the Child Care Business Summit. We're going to be focusing on things such as HR policy, finances, uh, legal issues. Uh, those are the type of speakers I'm going to have. So we there's so many conferences in our area, in, in our niche that is child care specific, right? For the teachers, classroom practices. But we don't have a whole lot of conferences that really focus on the business practice of child care specifically. So that's my goal is to bring you guys a conference that isn't a commercial. I've been to other business conferences in our field and it's almost like the different people are just trying to sell you something like they're I don't know if you guys let me know in the comments if you've been to these conferences where it feels like the presenter is just trying to sell something. So I'm really trying to get away from that. I just want to bring you guys educational materials that can help you run your center more successfully. So, for example, um, I do have a lawyer coming to speak. We have an HR expert. I have financial advisors. I also have a marketing expert, right? And these are people who are going to be talking to you about business practices that are child care specific to our industry. So right now, our tentative dates um, for the conference are going to be October 21st through the 24th. And the way it's going to run, it's going to be here in Reno, Nevada. I'm so excited. I love Reno. That's um, I only live about half an hour outside of Reno. Uh, we are going to stay at the Atlantis Casino, and I'm going to put it right there so you guys can look it up. Uh, when I was checking out different venues for us to go to, I looked really hard to see where can you guys just really have a great experience? Because I know 
in the field, ECE leaders, you work so hard. We, we just work so hard. And so I don't want this conference just to be just one of those exhausting conferences where you're just learning, 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 you go home and you're exhausted. I want this to be a little bit of a vacation too. So if you look up the Atlantis Resort in Reno, it is an amazing, amazing facility. It's um, got about, I think, five restaurants, gorgeous facility. I, it's the type of resort that you literally don't even have to leave. You could stay there for four days and never even leave. So we're going to have just a lot of fun. Um, on So the dates are Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday, we're planning just a fun day. One of the things we're going to do is um, take you guys up to Lake Tahoe. Uh, Reno is only about 30 minutes away from Lake Tahoe. And one of my partners has a friend that owns a restaurant up there. So we are going to go up to Lake Tahoe for the day. I'm going to get my vans. We're going to drive up there and just network and have fun together. So I'm so excited about that. Uh, just that day where uh, I think that's another thing that conferences really lack where you want to talk to the speakers. You want to talk, just talk talk and like brainstorm and get to know the other leaders in the room. So that's something that we're going to be doing with this conference is we're going to be going up to Lake Tahoe also amazing, gorgeous Lake Tahoe. Um, and it's just going to be a vacation too. I, if you guys are going to, some of you are going to be flying out here uh, to the Reno area. I want to make sure you're getting a vacation as long as some great training information for you guys. So we will be launching the website so you guys can buy your tickets soon. Um, oh, the other thing too, the Atlantis has negotiated a wonderful rate for us. So if you guys go on there, Google the Atlantis, see what their hotel rates, don't worry. <laughs> the prices that you see are not the prices you're going to pay. It is it is a four-star resort. So normally it's very expensive, but I'm a local and um, my mom knows people. So we were able to get you guys a great deal on hotel. So I am very excited about everything that is coming down. So mark your calendars. October 21st through the 24th is when we'll be doing our conference here in Reno, Nevada. Check it out, the Atlantis Resort in Reno. I will have a lot more information for you guys to come, but I'm really excited to bring you that. Since this is my first year hosting a conference, I've, I've helped plan several conferences. I've been presenter at conferences before. I've been a speaker, but this is my first conference that I'm hosting. I am going to only limit it to 50 people. And I already have several people who are already like committed to buy. So if you want to come, you're going to have to get your tickets pretty early on. We also will be streaming the event live. But if you want that in-person experience, which I think, I don't know, I think we're all just craving that in-person experience. So let me know if that's something that you guys are excited about. I will be giving you more information, the links to sign up. But as of right now, we are limiting it to 50 people just because um, I just kind of want that small, intimate uh environment. And with COVID, we just don't know. I know my state is about to go into a complete full reopen, but we still want to social distance and be safe. So that's why we're booking a room that's going to be big enough for 120 people, but we're only allowing 50 people. That way we can keep that social distancing for anyone who isn't comfortable, but really wants to be around. There's going to be plenty of opportunities to distance like that. So I'm so excited. Let me know how you guys feel about it. I hope I get to meet many of you in person. This is going to be a great opportunity for us just to get together. So many of us chat on Facebook all the time in our Facebook groups. And sometimes I feel like I know you guys already. But this will be the great opportunity for us to just really see each other in person, get to say hello, and actually give each other a hug. I mean, we've in COVID, we've been through a lot together. And uh, for those of you who've been watching me now, it's been about a year that I started this. And for those of you who've been watching me for the year, you know, it, we've been through a lot together. So I'm excited to get to meet you guys in person, to be able to sit with you, have lunch together um, and all that. I'm working on the menus right now. So the um, at, in the conference, your breakfast and lunch will be included. I think we're going to be doing like hors d'oeuvres before dinner, but I figured you guys can go experience all the wonderful, amazing restaurants at the Atlantis. It's one of my favorite, it is probably my favorite resort in the Reno area. So um, when I was first planning this, I was like, gosh, I hope we can afford to do the Atlantis. I hope we can, because it's so beautiful. Man, we were able to, I'm so glad I was able to get you guys that beautiful resort. It's gonna be so much fun. Um, and then we're gonna get to learn too, right? You guys are gonna get to learn more about 
the legal issues. You're going to get to learn more about uh, HR issues. So many different things. Let's see. We do. I have some comments from you guys. Um, Tamara says, hi, Tamara. How are you? Oh, Lizbeth, hello. Prina, hello. That sounds amazing. It is going to be amazing, Prina. I hope you get to join us. Prina is one of my newest team members, so I'm so hoping she gets to join us. Vicky is excited. I'm so excited, too. Vicky, we get to meet in person. It'll be amazing. So um, I've been working with Vicky for some time now, so I'm really hoping I get to meet you in person, Vicky. That would be awesome. Yes, and uh, Lake Tahoe is amazing. It is I, I've been blessed. I was born and raised in Reno and I grew up my entire life going to Lake Tahoe and until I travel to other places, I don't always realize how beautiful it is and just how amazing it is. But when you go up there, I mean, it is world renowned for its beauty. So I'm when I was planning this conference out and uh, the team I'm working with, the planet out, I told them, I'm like, Either we're doing this in Lake Tahoe or I want to take them up to Lake Tahoe. They've got to see the lake. If you're going to be all the way in Reno, you've got to see Lake Tahoe. So super excited to bring this to you guys. So make sure you mark your calendars. And uh, our website should be launched later this week where you guys can actually start booking it and getting everything done. So I think I'm just waiting on the Atlantis to get me that coupon code for you guys so that you can book your hotel rooms at the discounted rate. That is, uh, the dates are October 21st through the 24th. So um, the way it's gonna work is we're gonna be doing just like the conference part of it on the 21st and 22nd, which is a Thursday and Friday. We're just going to be doing like the talking, uh, you know, like sitting in class basically. And then Saturday is going to be a networking day where we are going to, um, go that's when we're gonna go to the lake and i'm sorry guys i'm gonna my throat's a little dry today so saturday is the day we're gonna just spend together networking having fun and we're gonna go up to lake tahoe spend the day up there uh usually in october the weather is still pretty warm up here so i'm hoping we get to do some lake activities if not lake tahoe is a year-round area there's always something for us to do up there so, and then Sunday I be, is basically going to be your travel back day, just a free day for you guys to do what you want. Um, I'd be totally willing to tour you guys. Like if you guys had time on Sunday, we could go up to zoo and around so you guys could see my childcare center. Um, I could bring my vans, bring some of you guys up here that I would be totally open to. Uh, if there's, if I get enough interest on Sunday, I would be more than happy to bring you guys up to my hometown, which is about 30 minutes away and bring you into zoo and around so you could see my childcare center live in person. I think that would be super fun. So if you guys get later flights, we can include a tour of Zoom in the whole package on Sunday. So I am very excited to be able to do this for you guys. And with you guys, I'll be excited just to be able to sit with you guys and, you know, have lunch together. It'll be so much fun. So check it out. I'll put the banner back up so in case you guys didn't see. I should have put a banner with the dates, huh? That would have been smart. <laughs> I have the Atlantis Resort banner, but I didn't think about making a banner for the dates. So the Atlantis Resort, Reno, Nevada, Google it. I will have a link for you guys soon. As soon as I get the information from them, I signed the contract with them. Now I'm just waiting uh, to get their portion of the information so we can finalize the website, get it out to you guys, and you guys can start planning and booking. I know I've, I'm going to a conference in early October. I've already got my hotel, booked the plane ticket, everything, just because now I, you know, just that whole commitment. So this one is going to be, um, I go to a lot of business conferences, but we need one that is childcare specific for us. And we also need it where they're not trying to sell us something. I There are other childcare conferences, but the one that are for business, I mean, the ones that are like, teaching you about classroom management are amazing. We have some amazingly wonderful conferences, but we don't have really great business childcare conferences. And the ones that I have been to, it's almost like each speaker is just putting out their commercial to get you to buy something from them. And that's something I really wanted to avoid. I wanted to really just get people who are going to educate you guys and who are just going to bring you useful content that you can take back when you guys go back home. You're going to have useful information that you can use every day without having to contract somebody and without having to pay for more, you know, pay for more services. So if you're one of my members, um, what, I, what I'm doing is uh, a 
my, we just came up with this new business plan for child care business professionals, and I'm trying to make it an all inclusive program. And um, part of what we're doing is, and part of the reason, like I brought Prana, Prana Richards on, and she's a behavior specialist, right? So Prana is going to fill that gap in my company where if you're having behavior issues, which I'm a behavior specialist too, but it's not what I like to teach. So I'm not going down that road. But Prana will be helping coach you guys. So for my members, if you're really struggling with classroom management, Prana will be your coach now. I'm also in contract with two other coaches. I'm not ready to tell you guys their names. One of them you guys know. She's pretty popular out there. I'm so excited to have her coming on board. But she is a director extraordinaire. She uh, just an amazing lady. Uh, she will be helping directors. So I'm bringing her in as a coach. Uh, she's a faith based director. So that'll be really nice because that is experience I don't have. I don't have a lot of experience in the faith-based community. So if you are a church center um, or faith-based center, she'll be able to help you in that area as a coach. And uh, I also have one other uh, team member coming on who is a regional director. She oversees, right now she oversees four um, different campuses, but by the end of the year, she'll be at nine. So she knows what it's like to juggle several different locations at one time as a regional director working under an owner. And that is not something I have experience with either. I've owned multiple centers at one time, but I've never been a regional director over more than two at a time. So when I bring her on site, she'll be able just to help. So one of my goals is to be a one-stop shop for my members. You have HR problems, call, and we'll have an HR expert. Legal problems, call, we'll have a lawyer. And that's basically what I bring you to the conference. These are people who I work with and who I'm bringing in as part of my team so that you don't have to go hire all these different people. And you can just come into child care business professionals and we've got it all for you. We're just a one-stop shop. And I'm trying to keep it affordable. There's other coaching companies out there that are very expensive. They charge over $1,000 a month. Uh, for the same type of thing where I just, I want to keep it affordable, but I want to bring you guys that high quality. That is a one-stop shop, everything you need. I'll bring on a curriculum specialist, every different asset, uh, aspect. Uh, one of the things I tell my members all the time is as a member of child care business professionals, I consider your entire center a member, not just you. So a lot of my owners your directors are in the group. You guys know that I have uh, multiple owners in the group that there, you know, there's more than one owner. So they're all members of the group. Um, so I do consider the center, my client, not just you as an individual, whoever ends up contracting with me. So we coach teachers, we coach directors, we coach everybody. I've even done staff meetings via zoom. <laughs> so um, I've, when I had an owner really struggling and I did her staff meeting for her. So we do a lot. Uh, at Child Care Business Professionals, and I'm bringing on more coaches with more expertise to help me out so that we are just a one-stop shop for you guys. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. I can't wait to bring these changes to you guys or this conference and the new things that are coming down the road to you guys. Um, but today I do want to get to mindset. I've already been on for 19 minutes and we haven't even talked about mindset. So I'm just going to very briefly just go over something. Um, I got a message this weekend from a, a teacher, actually, and she it really just touched me and got me thinking. And I'll probably do a short video or I'll have my marketing team just cut this clip out so you guys can see this. But later, too. But um, what really struck me is she was describing her center. And the director, and it sounded like she has an amazing center uh, where the, there's just a very strong sense of team. They really step up. They really just, it sounds like they just love their job and they have a great passion. The problem is that the director's not there for them. And when the staff tried to come to the director, the director took it very personally instead of professionally. And so that's basically what I really want to touch on today for Mindset Monday, because the, your staff's mindset is just, if not more important than yours. We need to understand as the professionals in early childhood education that our staff, they are the lifeblood of our center. 
if we're not nurturing them, it can really take our centers down. They are our lifeblood. They are the heartbeat of the center. And we need to make sure that we show them how appreciated they are, that we care about their mindset, that we care about them. We also need to be open to constructive criticism. I teach all the time to you guys um, who are my members, and I've probably done a podcast episode on like doing employee reviews and helping employees understand that they're not perfect, right? And um, I've told you guys, one of the things I do going into an employee review is I always tell them, I'm not perfect. I have room to grow. There is always room for us to grow. Until the day I reach perfection, I will have room to grow. And since I'll never be perfect, and since I will never, I'll always be able to be a better version of me, I'll be learning forever. So now in this review, I'm going to show you how you can be the better, next best version of yourself, right? And we want them to be open to that. I think most of us hate doing employee reviews because of the pushback we get, right? And how personal people take things. But we as leaders need to see that in ourselves also. We need to see when we're taking things too personally. We need to see when we need to hear the constructive criticism too. Our staff should be able to come to us and say, hey, I really feel like you're not coming alongside me and supporting me in this area. I really feel alone in this and I need your help right? They have to be able to do this. Is it difficult? Yeah, I'll be the first to say I have a hard time too. So what I do, because nobody likes the constructive criticism, nobody wants to hear it, right? But we need to hear it. So whenever that comes at me, I always make myself pause. I make myself just pause. And I literally will tell myself, stop, think about what they're saying. Do not react, let it sink in. And one of the things I'll do is say, okay, I hear you. I understand what you're saying. Let me get back to you on that. I need some time to process and just, you know, and, but you've got to make sure when you do it, you're very non-confrontational. You're very laid back about it. And you're um, just more relaxed, right? So that they don't feel threatened. They don't feel at ease and tell them it's okay. One of the things I will always say too is thank you for bringing this to me. I can't fix what I don't know is broken. So I need to hear this stuff. And I'm so grateful that you had the courage to bring this to me because it is not easy bringing things like that to the owner, right? It is not easy to telling the owner, Hey, you're messing up here. So that is very intimidating. So I always thank them. Thank you. I needed to hear that. I really, and I tell them, I really, really appreciate when people like you have the courage to come and tell me these things because I can't fix what I don't know is broken. And I needed to hear that, but let me have some time to process it so I can work through it and figure out how I can come up with a solution. So that's what I always do. Always thank them so that they don't feel bad about approaching me. I don't ever want them just like your children. If you're a parent, you don't want your children to ever feel bad about coming to you with anything. So even though it may be really, really hard to hear, right? There's so many things that are really hard to hear as a parent, as an owner, as a director, as a leader. We need to hear it. We need to. So first thing you want to do is make sure that you're not getting defensive. Make sure you're making the person feel comfortable with the confrontation, right? You need to make sure that they know that you're okay with them talking to you. So you got to put them at ease, make them feel comfortable and then separate yourself. I have to separate myself because in my mind, you know, it's natural. We are human. So our brains automatically go into that. You what you feel what? And that anger wants to come out, right? So you need to give that anger time. So what I do again is I give myself a time limit. I let myself feel the feelings. I'm not going to suppress them. I'm not going to make them go away, but I let myself feel the feelings. And then I tell myself I'm done. I, oh, for something like this, I probably give myself 20 minutes. Maybe if it's a big character flaw, I might have to give myself longer. Right. But, it, but for the most part, I give myself about 20 minutes. And then um, I tell myself after 20 minutes, okay, get over it, move on. Let's find a solution. And I just have to shake it off. I, I just make myself shake it off, find the solution to the problem, get over it and go back to the employee. Right. And a lot of times I won't go back to the employee until the next day because I really want to make sure that my mindset is in the right place, but you want to get back to the employee. 
they may not always be right, right? But you still have to treat them as if they are. You have to honor their feelings and come to them and tell them. You're absolutely right. I, I think the toughest one I ever heard was an employee said to me that I don't listen to them. And um, part, and I think I've told you guys about this, but part of it is a perception. If you guys notice, I use my hands a lot. Um, and I always have to have like my tea, something with me. Like and you guys, my members know, like I use exercise bands when I'm teaching different things like that. Well, I have narcolepsy which can give you some issues that are very similar to ADHD. So I have to be doing something. I keep rocks by me, right? Something I can feel, touch. So a lot of times when my staff comes in to talk to me, in order for me to be able to concentrate on what you're saying, I have to be doing something. And I found a lot of times what I was doing is I would pick up my phone and start playing like something like Candy Crush, you know, because for some reason when I'm doing things like that, I can concentrate on what you're saying. If I'm just looking at you, talking back and forth, I can't concentrate. It's just part of what the narcolepsy does to me. Well, I didn't realize, and I will, I'll pick up things like this rock and I'll just start looking at it and playing with it, right? It's a cute, fancy rock. I like to see how cool it is in the light. And I'll start doing things like that, right? But it helps me to be able to focus. Here in my office, I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures I've posted, but I'm on a treadmill right now so a lot of times and i'll show you guys if i'm working and i'm in a long meeting i have to be um on my treadmill walking in order to get through a meeting i'm sorry i'm trying to turn it on so if i'm in a longer meeting with you guys and some of you who are my members have seen me i'll just suddenly start walking because i cannot just stand and talk i, I just can't do it but what was happening is I had never really explained that to my staff and I'll stop walking for you guys now. But if you ever see me pacing like that, that's why, because I can't concentrate. So I start to walk on my treadmill that is a desk treadmill. So for my staff, I didn't realize I'd never explained it to them. So as I'm doing these other things and I'm fidgeting with things and I'm playing, they were perceiving that as me not listening. They didn't understand that I need these things in order to listen because I do have a neurological condition. I had never explained it to them. So I was very thankful to the staff member because I came to, as I asked other staff members, I came to find out they all felt that way. They all felt like I wasn't listening to them. Part of it was true. Part of the thing that was happening was I was always in such a rush that I was rushing them out of my office all the time. Like I, I and. It's just me. I always feel like I have to move on to the next thing. And I do cram my schedule. I, I am a bit of a workaholic. So I do tend to just be ready to go on to the next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. It's how my brain works. I love being really just efficient, active. Let's get on. Let's go. Let's go. Um, when, uh, you know, I just want you to get to the point. And let's move on. And I think it really was sending the message though that I wasn't hearing my staff. I just wanted them to tell me what they wanted, move on, right? But they need to be heard in their way, not my way. And I really just, it was hard because it was a hard, tough pill to swallow because I realized one, I wasn't communicating to them why I sem seemed distracted. What made me appear to be distracted actually helped me to focus on them. They didn't understand that because I never verbalized it. Two, I really was ready to move on to the next thing, right? So I wanted them to just hurry up and tell me. I want to like, let's get to the point and move on. And um, that's where I think I really had to stop and tell myself this can't be about how I want things done. It has to be how about they need things done, right? So I had to really change my approach. And now I do explain to them. My whole staff knows I have narcolepsy. If I'm talking to you, and I'll tell people now, like when I start fidgeting with something, right? If I, I will, I'll tell them, I'm sorry. And I, I keep fidget things around me all the time. Now I have like, um, and just for some recommendations to you guys, because so many of you guys are in the same boat as me. I mean, this is just how life is. I have like these things where you can just squeeze, you know, I got the rubber bands, the workout bands. I have all sorts of different things around me to fidget with. I keep them in my purse, but now instead I tell people, I'm sorry, I have a neurological condition. And in order to focus on what you're saying, I got to have my hands busy. I have to be doing something. I have to be walking. I have to be moving. If I'm walking, my hands don't have to be busy. But I, I, I have to be physically active or I cannot concentrate on what you're saying. If I stand here and just watch you, I can't listen. I can't 
he, you know, it, my brain will go in all sorts of different directions. And I'm sure a ton of you have the same issue as me. So um, I don't know, sometimes I think that's part of being female and we have so much going on. But I do know that a lot of it is my neurological condition. So I explain it to people now. Uh, when I go to church, I knit. I knit during church services. But I go to the pastor and I say, hey, please do not think that I'm being disrespectful. But I have a neurological condition. And I do this before church. I do this before classes I take. I, I'll tell them I have a neurological condition. I cannot concentrate on what you're saying if I'm not physically doing something. So I knit. I, I bring my knitting or my crocheting. I hope you don't mind, but this is what I'm doing. I will sit in the back so I'm not distracting anybody. But because of my neurological condition, this is what I need to do. So I kind of got off on that tangent. But that's my point is we have to be open to listening. And we have to know our own weaknesses. And for me, I didn't realize that was a weakness. So some of these weaknesses, we just ha we have to figure out ways, how can we overcome this weakness, right? So that's what we need to do is be open to hearing it. There may be something that you're doing in an unintentionally that you didn't realize that this is how it's coming through. I didn't realize that me fidgeting with things was making my staff feel like I wasn't hearing them, that I wasn't listening, that I didn't want them around. I didn't know that. But as soon as I explained to them, I'm sorry, you guys, I have a neurological condition. I, I can't just sit here. I have to be doing something. It really helped them to back off, like understand that it's not that I don't want to hear them. It's that I, I can't just sit here. But we need to be open to that constructive criticism because it also did open me up to understanding that I need to hear what they need to say and not what I want to hear. Right. I need to be patient, which is not my virtue. Let me tell you, I am not a patient person and it's something I really have to work on, but I also need them to tell me that when it's like, we need a little bit more patience. We need understanding. We need, you know, and if I'm not open to that, then I can lose some really good staff members. So it's important just again, just to reiterate, we need to digest what they're saying, right? Give yourself that time. Thank them for having the courage. Thank them for being honest with you, you know, and, and that's something to look at. I know it's hard. So look at the fact that they're being honest with you. Be grateful that they're honest, right? So thank them, like, thank you so much for being honest. Thank you for feeling like you're safe with me. Thank you for trusting me enough to know that you're safe to come with to me with your needs. I really, really appreciate that. And I will honor that because you did feel that safety in speaking to me. And when you do that also just um, really, I don't know, I think the thinking is a really big deal and help them to just feel comfortable coming to you. Otherwise when it's really important, they're not gonna, they're gonna be too scared to come to you and you're gonna lose great staff members. So all of these techniques, my bottom line goal is always to retain. When I have those golden employees, I want to retain them. And I think that's what made me the most sad about the message I got over the weekend. I get a lot of messages from you guys, but this one really stood out to me because I'm reading this and I can tell this is a great teacher and she loves her center. She loves her center to the point that she's struggling and I don't want to leave, but my director isn't there for me. She doesn't do anything for any of us. She it, we need her help. We need her leadership. We need her guidance. And, um, but I don't know how to get her to help and guide. And so it was just kind of like, oh gosh, this director doesn't even know she's got this diamond of an employee and she's going to lose her. She's going to lose her if she doesn't open herself to listening because nobody's going to stay. So when you have those great employees, you never want to lose. You want them to be able to come to you. you got to be open to the criticism because we're not perfect either. Just like they're not perfect and we need to guide them, we need to hear them too. So I hope that was helpful for you guys today. I won't take up any more of your time. And I am so excited about our conference. I can't wait to meet you guys in person. So um, I will be posting more information, giving you guys more uh, data on that as it comes out. So I hope all of you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. I will see you. Um, I will not see you next week. Actually, I will probably have a replay for you guys because I um, am actually not going to be around next Monday. So no mindset Monday, no live mindset Monday, but I will probably record something to be posted for you guys. So have a great rest of your week, everybody. Bye.